The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome, everybody, to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So, what do we have going on today? Well, the market's up a little bit, uh, up 10 points on the S&P cash. So what are we doing in the volumes uh, to, to, to us? Check this out here. A little under 4 billion shares. So uh, volume wasn't blowout yesterday. I think it was 6.6 billion shares. Uh, today, we're going to be going higher again on lighter volume. Uh, I am all cash in all my newsletters right now. And the reason is not because the market, I think, is going higher. Actually, a different reason. And uh, not because I think it's going lower either way. Uh, to me, there is one big thing that changed. A little bit on Monday and a whole lot yesterday. And uh, well, I wanted to get this up. And I didn't wait long enough. There it is. Uh, what changed? Uh, option market makers have locked the market up uh, in a way that we've talked about it in a, a great deal of times before. Uh, I've been pretty um, accurate on these calls. And what that call is, is a sideways market. Uh, let me bring this up here right now. Um, what they did was lock this market pretty much down uh, in options. Uh, this thing could have, uh, you know, we were looking uh, sub uh, 2700 coming back on Monday. So do they know something about, I don't know, trade or any of the other things that everybody's talking about? Uh, is this the last safe haven for cash in the world with problems uh, that we see in Germany and in England? Brexit in England, uh, the toppling of a government that's been in power for 13 years in Germany. Uh, is there other issues going on out here? I don't know, but I do know that uh, what they did yesterday was not push these things up uh, and looking at the individual stocks. In fact, I looked at, I think, of probably 80 of the 100 NASDAQ stocks. They weren't thinking higher. All they were thinking was that the market goes sideways. Now, that may be because uh, they're afraid that the market could rocket if uh, trade talks produce fruit or blow up because they don't. But uh, right now, uh, they're pretty much betting on the market going nowhere for at least, uh, it could be all the way into the 4th of July weekend. Now, of course, today's the 20th. We've got a handful of days before we get into fun buying, and then we get into the 4th of July weekend. Uh, maybe they think that they can just paper over all the problems. Doesn't really look like anybody's betting on the market going a lot higher. Uh, there are, of course, uh, always uh, some kind of device that someone's always uh, touting as the next great savior of all the money. Uh, I think that's the IWM at the moment. Everything else not doing too much different than anybody would think it would be. Uh, we'll look at some of the other stocks out there. I did see uh, only a couple of signals and we'll go through those in the charts. Uh, and they probably are not where you would think they are because I haven't seen anybody talking about it today. So we'll get into that. Um, in the meantime, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. And uh, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Put a message in the den. But uh, right now, uh, looks like a kind of a lock market. Would not be surprised to see trading ranges of, of uh, less than 10 points each day. And wouldn't be surprised if we're right on the same spot a week from today. There's just nothing out here saying that people want to buy going higher. 
and everybody wants to buy the dip. So maybe that is what locks us in to these prices for at least a little while. That consolidation will tell us, I think, a great deal of what happens. But uh, we may just go sideways for that. So uh, for plays, there aren't a lot. Uh, there are a few uh, stocks I'm looking at going into that 4th of July week and fund buying that might move on short squeezes. Um, and we'll see if there's anything develops in that. But I really just don't see a lot of uh, reason to have money at risk right now, uh, either long or short. Uh, normally, if you're wrong short, then you want to go long. I just don't see a whole lot here either way, more of a coin flip uh, than anything else. So uh, eh, that's interesting. we got a few minutes left. I wanted to talk about something that happened normally. We talk about history, and it's going to be a little bit of history today. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Uh, during World War II, a statistician, Abraham Wald, took survivorship bias into his calculations when considering how to minimize bomb, uh, bomber losses to enemy fire. Uh, during, uh, I think it was about 1941 or 42, we were losing a huge amount of B-17s bombing uh, Germany. And they wanted to know where to put the armor. They, you know, they could put on a few hundred pounds of 10 millimeter steel uh, in various places. And they would see planes, the generals would see planes come back all shot up and say, that's where we're probably where we need to put the armor. The problem was that they did it and it didn't change the survivorship of those planes whatsoever. They got uh, Abraham Wald, which is a, uh, he was a big shot. They had a lot of think tanks in World War II. If you ever wonder where those think tanks actually ever started and why they're so prevalent in Washington, D.C. now, you look to World War II because guess what? That's where they started. They got all the smartest people, and if they weren't making the atomic bomb down there in New Mexico, uh, they were help, trying to help the war effort any way they could. Uh, Wald was a statistician. And he specialized in a lot of stuff that people wouldn't think about. It took him all of 10 minutes to look at uh, all the data that the generals offered him and said, uh, you're doing one major thing wrong. And he says, you're not considering the planes that didn't return. The ones that returned that are all shot up tells you where you can get shot and not have a problem. The ones that didn't come back, that's where the problem lies. They changed the... Uh, where the uh, armor went, mostly around the pilot and the co-pilot, because if the, you get shot there, guess what? You got four engines. You get uh, the cockpit blown up. Um, that's it. And, of course, uh, the uh, idea was, at least the Germans were taught, to come in behind uh, the uh, B-17s and shoot from the rear. So they started putting armor in right behind the pilots. and. Uh, Almost within two weeks, they already had 25% more bombers coming back. Uh, we're going to talk about why this applies to the stock market when we come back. But uh, there is a big piece of news today that shows survivorship bias in the indexes. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. So to finish the story, um, you don't always want to wear, look where you got hit, but where you didn't get hit. Uh, and of course, I'll talk to lots of people that'll tell me about the NASDAQ or uh, the NYSE or the Dow. Uh, today, the Dow lost its uh, only rem uh, remaining uh, stock from the original index. And a lot of people compare things in the past uh, when the index is not the same, it's not the same constituents, not the same uh, sectors of the market. And I always kind of scratch my head. I don't put a lot of weight in that. Uh, when you look at the NASDAQ, there have been over 480 stocks in the NASDAQ 100, four times more than the actual 100 so they kind of come and go a lot. Now, will they track over time? They will for a while. But what you'll notice is that there's a, a big survivorship bias, and that is a lot of these stocks just leave. Uh, you know, a year, two years, do market charts tend to line up? Yeah. Five years in indexes, not so much. You also have to worry about, uh, I would say, uh, an issue with charts today, which is uh, share buybacks. Now, even if they don't buy back but a tenth of what they say they're going to buy back, over time, Boeing's been able to get their stock price higher by buying their shares back. I don't think anybody would argue with it. But uh, when you look at indexes or you even look at individual stocks that have been around for a while, eh, things kind of change over time and not all at once. But uh, I don't know if you could compare the NASDAQ in 1996 to the NASDAQ today, I think there's only 10 stocks of the 100 that are still in it that were in it in 1996. So, eh, just, just an idea out there. But uh, today we lose the only remaining stock in the Dow, and that is General Electric. 
It's getting the boot. And uh, none too soon, I think, if anybody else thinks about it. Um, that's not it. That's it. There's not a lot going on today. It's kind of a quiet day. Wanted to uh, go out here and start looking at some charts. One of the ones that I thought was the most interesting to me because of the weakness in China was uh, the uh, yin, Y-I-N-N. -N. And, of course, there's a yang to the yin. There has to be. Uh, but uh, we did see volume yesterday get tested on uh, about half the volume uh, of the major low, and that's the February 9th low in the uh, in uh, the YINN. It had 3 million shares that day. 29.56 was the low in that. Now, yesterday you had 1.5 million shares. It went below it. Now, is it going to close back above it? Don't know yet, but a close back above uh, 29.56 might be some kind of signal out here that... Uh, why China's been in distress for a while might be interesting. So that would be it. Uh, two, 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 two. Okay. Um, other stocks I wanted to look at. There was one in here. UBS is another one out here that uh, why not making any kind of big signal out here that says to me that I want to buy this thing uh, did test this gap up. This is the gap up of April 24th. Came up with a 2. Point, or excuse me, 4.2 million shares yesterday. Um, yeah, that was 4.2. Yeah, 4.2 million shares uh, yesterday. It tested it with 5.16 million shares and bounced today. Um, you've been coming back to this one for a while. But about 1475 would, you know, if you could continue light volume, maybe it gets down there yesterday, too much volume. But maybe if there's something comes back, uh, there might be something in this financial sector. We certainly are looking at levels where I would love, uh, if you're looking for a signal, you'd either want to see these things have all kinds of volume or no volume. You had a little bit too much volume, which suggests this low is from yesterday is going to get retested again uh, in the uh, retail dining space texas roadhouse if you would have asked me which one of these uh, restaurants was going to go to the moon it wouldn't have been texas roadhouse um, still doing well yesterday not a lot of volume a little higher out here today and pulling back a little but uh quite a run from 39 dollars 40 on march 13th of this year um, i looked through this chart today i never saw much of what's going on now, stocks that uh, are kind of moving with some gusto today, uh, we're up 10 points on the S&P cash, by the way. NASDAQ's up 72, Dow's up 5, which give you an indication. Russell's up 14. Uh, uh, so Starbucks came out with a warning after the bell last night. Um, kind of interesting to see that They've opened so many stores now that all they're doing is cannibalizing uh, from other stores. But again, yeah, I don't think there's anything new to this. Everybody knows they had way too many stores. Question is just whether and when this became an issue. Now that the uh, CEO left and we've got a new CEO, uh, it's very it's not uncommon at all, let me put it this way, uh, for them to throw everything in the kitchen sink as quickly as they can. Uh, because almost always, the uh, if you look at the books with the rosiest of glasses, uh, over time, there tends to be a lot of excesses in the books. New CEOs, a lot of times people will start selling them almost right away, assuming that they're going to try to clean the books up in the first few months of being a new CEO. Uh, and you know what? With some of the other stuff going on in Starbucks, not a surprise that this thing's got hammered. Uh, but one of these companies that thought that they were going to make a huge amount of money in China and saying it ain't so. But, uh, they're going to have to uh, taper their optimism uh, down through the 
previous low of uh, August 18th, 2017, that had 10 million shares. You already have 48.5 million shares. And, you know, I, yeah, I think it was probably predictable. Uh, a lot of virtue signaling at Starbucks, and that rarely turns into cash on the bottom line. Uh, Tower Semiconductor is on uh, a uh, gap, and there are not a lot of semis that look very good. This one is kind of interesting. Uh, TSEM, uh, the gap up on May 8th of 2017, so what, a little over a year ago, uh, came with uh, 3.8 uh, million shares. Uh, and now we're down, uh, coming into that same gap with uh, 588,000 shares. So that was kind of interesting. No tantrum, please. A taper, not the animal, is slowly changing of fundamentals. Not the taper, not the animal. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And Synaptics uh, bouncing a bit today, uh, announcing that they are in talks to get bought out by Dialogue Semi. Uh, I don't know if you can put a lot into it. It's, you know, up five, six bucks. 
Um, Energy is pretty good so far. Just I don't see a great deal out there in that chart today. Got an email uh, from Robert in Orlando. Robert asks if there's anything else that I see and uh, about the market going sideways and should he be selling uh, spreads why the market goes sideways. Um, I've never liked that approach to the market. I know a lot of people do, um, but it seems like you never make what you think you're going to make with the spreads. There seems to always be something that, you know, either the decay or you didn't get the ladder in right. Um, kind of more the, of a science to get that perfect. Uh, but I will tell you this, uh, Jim Sinclair, uh, the legendary gold trader, said one thing that I really remember for a long time. This had to be probably back in 2001 or two. Uh, there was a lot of pontificating about stuff, but there was one thing that he said that really stuck with me. It seems like all these people that are legends, there's always like one thing that really is, uh, stands out in my mind about them. Uh, but he talked about sideways markets and if you wanted to be in the gold or silver or platinum markets, the thing that you really want to be watching for are sideways markets because that's when things really start to pick up. And I, we did in gold early on, I think 2002 to about 2005, there were a lot of times when the markets just went sideways. And that seemed to be when gold really started to ramp. Um, got to, a second chance to talk to him later on. And basically his theory was that if everybody in the equities market couldn't find action in the equities or the bond market, that they tend to go to the commodities market and they'll cause some trouble over there for a while. Um, especially the fast money crowd, they got to be making money in something and they can put some fairly large uh, issues into a market like gold or crude. Don't see much in the way out here on gold today, but certainly you could see, especially with OPEC, maybe some things happening with crude. Uh, the uh, it's up what a buck uh, today. Um, I don't know if there's a great deal going on, um, but you know maybe the dollar either goes higher or lower, and maybe that really affects. It had seemed to affected the stock market or the bond market that much, but maybe that is what will light the fire in either crude uh, or gold and get it to be the thing that everybody's looking at in the next week or so. Um, you've kind of come down here on lower levels. Let's take a quick look. Uh, is it GDX? Okay, here. GDX, um, we've talked about this for a while, um, and you've got a pretty monster pattern out here. Um, and this thing's going to break one way or the other. Again, I'm not a big fan of getting in before and predicting uh, which way this thing goes. But uh, do I want to use the ruler? Yeah, I want to use the ruler. Okay. You got this kind of, eh, let's do that right there. You can probably make a case that 1235, what is that, back there in 2016? Um, you've got a fairly nice pattern. It's gotten a lot sharper here, but whether you're looking at the downside, I wish, I wish this thing from Windows let you draw lines. I'll get it a little bit better. So I could uh, telestrate what I want going on here. Um, but at least that's one way of looking at it. If you wanted this one, this thing has actually been in a de declining uh, pattern, which is uh, lower highs and higher lows for a long time. And when this thing breaks out, that's exactly when you want to start looking at gold, at least for me, not on a short-term basis, but a mid-term or longer-term basis. So. I haven't seen any reason I haven't been in gold that way. Uh, let's 
draw some lines on this one a little bit better here. Where is that thing? There we are. OK. So I think you can make a case that on a shorter term basis, the, these triangle patterns come in like this. So I think we're pretty close. You're on the very bottom side of breaking down. Uh, if you had like a one day reversal pattern down in gold, like maybe 1250 or 1225, uh, there wasn't a lot of juice and the thing came back into the trading range. I think you could make a case that that is uh, at least one uh, option in the blowout of all the people that have been in this for a while uh, and chase them out just before the reversal of this signal. Um, you're right on that line right now. But this is the kind of stuff that I look at. It's happened over time. It didn't it isn't talking about the next 25 cents in a stock higher or lower. In fact, the best way to think about gold is the way I look at it is uh, 1300 bucks. Uh, what was it if it was a $13 stock? If it went to $13.50, is that a big deal? Or if it went to 12.50, is that a big deal? And the answer is no. No one would say a stock that did that even in a day was a big deal. Uh, I think we've been focusing far too closely, or at least let me put, put it this way. If you're looking for a big turn trend in gold, I think looking at all these small little uh, fluctuations mask the bigger pattern out here for gold. So that would be it. Uh, okay, question in the den, uh, which is how big was the uh, change, uh, it was about 65 points higher. So, you know, we were looking at 2,700 and it went in two days up 65 points. So is it gonna go higher today? I don't think so. I think from everything I saw, they were, uh, especially the last 15 minutes of the day yesterday, they were selling as many puts as they could, uh, which uh, during the day they were selling uh, excuse me, they were selling as many puts all day long and switched to calls at the end of the day, which suggests that they hit where they wanted to be and now we're trying to get it back in line. So the big switch that I saw was at the end of the day. That makes me think that they are in this kind of trading range of probably, I don't know, 20, 2750 to 27 uh 71 this 2771 on the cash really looks to me like the area where we're finding a lot of sellers and it looks like uh 2550 ish is where we're gonna uh 2750 ish is where we're gonna find a lot of buyers that makes me think that this thing's gonna be tight for a little while again like i said uh i'm looking to some of these other longer patterns out here that look like they could break like old and uh, that would set up you know two three days Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. 
And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank. Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the TAS Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30 day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner Plus right at tfnn.com. And when when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the TAS Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of tfnn.com don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv for the latest market information and we go to the email tomorrow says uh, he's uh, from where? Seattle, Washington. Uh, up there, close to Redmond. I've been up there a bunch of times. Beautiful country. Uh, Twitter up here. And the question is whether you think uh, Twitter is making a double top out here. Uh, you got uh, not a lot of juice. Um, the question is if anything's changing in this stock. Um, I've got to say that I think a lot of these things are priced for perfection. It depends what the earnings look uh, like. Um, I mean, uh, what is it? Uh, t -t 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 a good example out here is ORCL. If I could type correctly. Uh, is back to its gap, pretty much blown away, back to this gap of May 15th, or excuse me, March 15th of 2017. You had uh, 18.4 million shares. Uh, you got 40, got 47 million shares already today, I think. Now, what we have, let's take a look, shorter look. Yeah, uh, 47 million shares. So you're into this gap already that goes back quite a ways. Um, is Oracle every company out here? No, but I think it's probably one of the weaker ones. And... I think we're starting to see a little bit of the wheat get separated from the chaff uh, of the uh, business 500 companies like Oracle is. Um, Amazon's stealing a lot of uh, Oracle's thunder. Um, Microsoft also doing a lot of uh, good in going after these big data centers that uh, Oracle's been selling its database to. Uh, you've got a, a little bit more of an option than you did in the past. Uh, eventually, everybody's going to catch up from you or come, uh, catch up with you. Uh, Oracle's still having problems. Uh, if you missed it, they had earnings and uh, a uh, a uh, guidance issue this morning. Uh, but you, what you see is this thing down on heavy volume. But what I was going to say is that they've developed the cloud for their big customers. But without the other small customers, the scale isn't what Amazon or Microsoft or Google has. And that's going to probably continue to hurt them, along with them uh, continuing to write off a great deal of uh, some of their projects that did not work as well as they had in the past. I think they've done a good job of keeping this thing going sideways for a while. Um, it could have been worse. Um, in the way that not in the way that went down today, but I mean, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that they were able to keep it in the high 40s and 50s.
for as long as they did. Um, so the management's pretty good. But uh, if you're the captain of the Titanic, it doesn't matter how good you are, the thing's going down. And uh, I think that's the same problem these guys have. But everything you were expecting, you had this big gap out here. It's been out there for a while. Um, and when we talk about three gaps, you certainly have them here. Um, I would have liked to seen this center gap a little bit more. But once you get two big gaps, you want to be looking for the third gap. And you probably got that exhaustion gap today. So does this thing instantly blow through lower? I do not think so. What you would probably look at is this kind of meandering back up into maybe the 48 area and on light volume setting up an ABC on the way down. Uh, is Oracle the next IBM? <sighs> I think IBM has always had some kind of moonshot in the background. IBM's working on uh, a lot of quantum computing. That could save them. I don't see any moonshot in Oracle. So in some ways, I would say Oracle has more problems than IBM. IBM might have a ship that comes back in because they've put one out to sea. Oracle, I just don't see where the ship is that's going to come back with the riches of India in the next couple of years. Now, maybe they got something they're working on internally, but I just don't see it. And they don't have the scale of the other companies. Similar, yes. The same, no. Uh, do they rhyme? I think a bit, but I think uh, IBM certainly is, uh, you know, we've seen it with, uh, I guess last week we brought it up, uh, Apple and IBM's collaboration to get into the hospital business went nowhere. Uh, so they've kind of written that off. Apple won't even talk about it. Um, they say it was last year's news, and I don't think it is. But uh, the, Apple's not even brought that up. But uh, the biggest problem with Oracle, I don't know what they're working on, if anything, that would actually change their business in the long term. IBM at least has a shot with quantum computing. They've got a couple of quantum computers out in the market now um, with their chips, I think, in the government. But they haven't really talked about it a lot. Um, so we'll see. But... Uh, Certainly, I think that they have a big problem, and that is uh, the proliferation of non-SQL type uh, and in-memory databases that are what really what people are looking for right now. Uh, Oracle was very good in the disk drive part of the business where you had giant hard drives that had to be searched, uh, but even Intel is part of that business now where it's not so much about how big the data is, uh, how much, how many uh, terabytes you can hold, but how fast you can, for the, a lot of the stuff, how fast you can retrieve it when necessary. And that rapid ability uh, is what Intel has been selling uh, on the hardware side. And of course, the people that have been facilitating that have been Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. Um, you haven't heard a lot about Oracle. Um, Oracle also did something that uh, I would say is like putting a gun in your waistband and pulling the trigger, if you get my drift. Uh, they've ticked off a great deal of the developer community that was using their Java system by uh, having it free for whatever it was, the last 14, 15 years, 16 years. Uh, and now saying that they will charge for it. And I don't think you can do anything more to chase away further business down the road than that. Now, maybe they make some short-term money off of it, but my guess is that they just chase people out of your development community. Uh, and, of course, when they're doing this, Microsoft's doing nothing but open sourcing all their stuff. Uh, Java was uh, came to Oracle through Sun, and uh, they did a pretty good job of trying to uh, keep people in the Java community. Now, with them charging for it, uh, and Microsoft actually starting to give away all the .NET stuff the last couple of years, I think there are two ships, one, Microsoft going the right way, 
Oracle going the wrong way. And I don't know if that changes anytime soon. But uh, we will be back after this short timeout. We'll wrap up the day. We're up seven points. I'm not expecting a lot in the very near future. Keep a close eye on commodities or some kind of bigger signal. As I said, from uh, Jim. Now I can't even remember his name. I'll think. The big gold trader, Jim. I said it earlier, and I just can't think of it. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the X. XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And I had a question about whether or not you, as an end user, would have to pay Oracle. The answer is no. Uh, what Oracle sold uh, Java for was line of business applications. Now, this isn't the probably the application you download and install on your Windows machine. But if you're an insurance company that has 10,000 employees and you need to look up con uh, customer information, that app probably a lot of them are either written in .NET, which is Microsoft's version of Java, or in Java itself. Uh, they're saying that uh, to use those programs anymore or send new programs out, that you would have to pay a tithe uh, to Oracle of some level. And I haven't seen the, the, the amount, but the articles have made it sound... Uh, and burdensome, uh, expensive, 
And without having to do that at Microsoft, I think Microsoft picks up a lot of new customers, especially since Java is so close to .NET and .NET just went open source. Uh, so like I said, one's going one way and one's going the other way. I just think it pushes a lot of people out of Oracle's uh, sphere of influence and into Microsoft. So, you know, you may have seen some of that already in the stock price. I'm not saying that's new in Microsoft. But that is different. Let's take a quick look at Microsoft before we go today. But uh, we'll continue on. Okay. He had a little bounce out of here, no volume, up to 102. So you're getting back into this down day uh, that had 28 million shares. You got 17 million shares. So you're probably going to end up with 22 or 23. So it's going to be kind of light. Again, just think we're going to get some sideways action for a while, that may be all the way through July 4th. Um, it's probably gonna take some kind of event to break us out of this trading range, so we'll watch it closely. At least that's my call. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.